This difference, perhaps more than any, really shines a light <laughs> on just how mad the English language is. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and occasionally those memos take the form of word differences. Now many weeks ago you may remember that I took a look at five British American word differences I learned living in the US. Well, you can put the planet on hold. This is part three. That's right, I'm putting together a series of videos to find out why Britain and America truly are two nations divided by a common language. Now, before we do get underway, do keep in mind that there were countless differences I knew long before moving to the new world. So don't expect to see words like fries or crisps or, you know, restroom. This is merely a continuing look at word differences I encountered after immersing myself in American life. Also, words that owe their differences merely to spelling or pronunciation are exempt from inclusion. And on a personal note, my elf Neldor will not be appearing tonight as he's busy cleaning the cupboards. And so without further ado, let's square up to this latest list. Board game aficionados will tell you of the numerous differences between games on either side of the pond. For example, a standard UK Monopoly board features London-based property, while the US equivalent is based on street names in Atlantic City. Moreover, instead of snakes and ladders, Americans offer shoots and ladders. Instead of Cluedo, they go for Clue. But one variation of which I wasn't previously aware comes in the form of a much simpler game. The one in question, often played on an 8x8 checkered board and involving two sets of opposing pieces, is named, quite appropriately, Checkers in the United States. Now, in a bizarre twist of both fate and confusion, I had long heard this game referenced in the REM song Man on the Moon, and all this time I assumed that the game, its rules and its layout, was exclusive to the US. However, several Christmases ago, bereft of things to do, somebody whipped out a dusty box at the family bash. Upon closer inspection of the game before me, I realised it was precisely the same game that we in Britain call drafts. So which word came first? While variations of the game are actually thousands of years older than both words, draft is attested earlier than the pluralised form checkers having fallen into usage in the 15th century. However, the singular word checker has its origins in chess from roughly 100 years earlier. Boom! How's that for a complete left turn? And speaking of left turns... When it comes to Britain and America, the automobile is actually quite remarkable in how both its look and vocabulary differ. Well known among those that like to share digestible memes are the likes of boot versus trunk and bonnet versus hood, but it turns out that seemingly every feature of the car bears a different name in either country. While I plan to save most of these for later lists, there is one that immediately springs to mind. The American term for what the British call an indicator. Now, it may be something to do with the fact that I don't myself have a driving license spelled like this in the US, but I somehow only learned of this difference after moving to the United States. Specifically, I learned it from my grandfather-in-law who had the unenviable job of giving me lessons. The memory of this otherwise placid man frantically imploring me to put on your turn signal, not in that accent, as a car behind us grew ever impatient will live long in the memory as will the word itself. And while it was decided by all parties, mostly granddad, that driving wasn't for me. I still mourn the humans who would have splattered against my windscreen or, you know, windshield in the US. Come to think of it though, that role was probably taken up by another life form. Unlike other insects that shall remain nameless, black widows. This famously spotty insect bears roughly the same characteristics in both countries. However, the insect I had always known as a ladybird goes by a similar but not identical name in the US, that being ladybug. Throughout the last 300 years, Britain tried out several names for the insect in the 1700s. Ladyfly was doing the rounds, as evidenced by a book bearing the second longest title in the universe. The history of the Royal Society of London for improving of natural knowledge from its first rise volume 4. And around that same time, even Lady Cow put in an appearance, as evidenced by a book bearing the longest title in the universe. A review of the works of the Royal Society of London containing animadversions on such of the papers as deserve particular observation in eight parts. Clearly not the Royal Society of Brevity. Meanwhile, one former occupant of the White House was probably quite relieved neither of these made their way to America, that being LBJ. No, not Lyndon Baines Johnson, but his wife, 
Ladybird. The first lady's real name was in fact Claudia, but the name Ladybird stuck after a nursemaid remarked of young Claudia, she's as purdy as a ladybird. While there's debate over whether this referred to the bug or an avian creature, biographers seem to agree that she didn't have wings. 21 years after she entered the world, meanwhile, our next entry was born. Since young boys insist on playing sophomoric toilet pranks on their friends and since, you know, leftovers are a thing, this particular product is essential to our everyday lives. But little did I realize that not only do Americans disprefer the term cling film, they often replace it with the genericized trademark saran wrap. Indeed, both words emerged during the 20th century with the invention of cling film occurring in the United States during the Great Depression. In fact, it was at this precise moment that saran wrap was trademarked and thus became the original original term. Over time, Americans, in acknowledgement perhaps of other brands, began more generally referring to it as plastic wrap. This was one of those word differences I learned early on after touching down in the United States. Not only was it around the time of Thanksgiving, when leftovers were of course a plenty, but my first Thanksgiving was weirdly spent with students who capitalized on both the fact that I wasn't yet used to American toilets and that I didn't have one of these. This difference, perhaps more than any, really shines a light <laughs> on just how mad the English language is. While others on the list have shown flashes <laughs> of brilliance, they can't hold a candle <laughs> to this entry. That, that, that last one did not work. Either way, this battery-operated flashing device, so vital during my cave-dwelling years, had never been anything other than a torch. Indeed, it calls to mind one of my favourite British children's shows, Jamie and the Magic Torch. I'd run home from school just for that. But the word torch in this sense has barely seen the light of day in the United States, I'll stop now, where flashlight is preferred. Interestingly enough though, this word made its way through several definitions in the late 1800s when it originally referred to an on and off signal light in a lighthouse. Shortly after, it was was used interchangeably with flash lamp to describe a photographer's light emitting equipment. All three usages occurred across just 20 years of human history, a flash in the pan in the wheel of time. Now I really have stopped. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments some of your favorite British American word differences and don't forget to click the subscribe button to ensure that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A big shout out to all my patrons who make this channel possible. Without you, none of it would be from the words, the research and the, the automobile compensation. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. All patrons will have access to my secret live stream and those pledging five dollars or more a month will get that plus my secret podcast and more until next time whether you call it cling film plastic wrap or saran wrap keep it away from small children and toilets good night thank you for watching this episode of lost in the pond don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world hit me up on twitter instagram and facebook and if you would like to support this channel please do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond